morning. Good morning. My name is Shannon Harden. I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator for Mayor Coleman, and it's an honor to welcome you here to City Council Chambers as we uh, participate in the graduation of the, the inaugural class of the Restoration Academy. So can we give a, a, a warm round of applause to these graduates? Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge some of our, our special guests, uh, starting with uh, Councilwoman uh, Pris Priscilla Tyson, uh, the president and one of our great partners in this program, the president of Columbus Urban League, Stephanie Hightower, uh, Impact Community Action CEO, Bo Chilton, Ed Roberts from Senator Sherrod Brown's office, and Director Colbert from ODJFS from the, the state. So thank you all for being here. It is a, it's a real honor uh, uh, to kick off this, um, this celebration, because that's what it is, a celebration of you guys who have done the hard work over the last six months to get to this point. Um, and it's about you. And, and, and I think back about the mayor creating this program. Um, and he said he wanted to be a model, a model for, for you, uh, a model for the community to see that hard work pays off, that with determination, things can come to fruition. Uh, a, uh, but more, more so uh, a model for the corporate community to see that if the city can step up and take a role in this important issue, then, then they can step up as well. And so it's really exciting to be here to show that we've had success over these last few months. And with that, I would like to um, introduce uh, Ms. Suzanne Coleman-Tobert for leading this program and, getting, uh, and, and bringing the mayor's vision uh, for this academy to fruition this year, Ms. Suzanne Coleman Tober. Thank you, Shannon. Good morning, everybody. As Shannon said, I'm Suzanne Coleman Tobert, and I'm with the Central Ohio Workforce Investment Corporation. And I too want to just acknowledge uh, Mayor Coleman. Uh, Council Member Tyson, Ed Roberts from Senator Brown's office, Pam Hedrick from Congressman T. Berry's office, I see uh, State Representative Ted Celeste, and all of the department directors, all of the partners, and community leaders who helped make this possible. And most of all, our first class of Restoration Academy <laughs> graduates. I, I just can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here this morning and to look out at our participants who are now going to be graduates of this program. Uh, you know, six months ago, Director Amy DeLong and I were given the task to put together a program uh, that would make sure that individuals who had background issues, who were ex-offenders, felons could have a way of getting employment, but specifically with the city of Columbus, in the departments of the city of Columbus. And this was an initiative that Mayor Coleman decided to give to the two of us. She and I had never worked together. Of course, we knew each other because we served on cabinet. But we kind of looked at each other and said, okay, uh, Amy is executive director of uh, civil service and I do workforce over COWIC, kind of makes sense. So how do we pull this all together? And we went about the task of bringing together just a host of community partners and with the determination of the graduates sitting in that front row, we all have created the Restoration Academy that will serve, as Shannon said, as an example for the cities all across the country, the mayors who represent the cities, employers. Employers need to know that you all can do this work. You bring skill sets just like anybody else. <laughs> and our mayor, uh, you had the insight, Mayor, and quite frankly, the gall to touch on an issue that many don't even want to talk about. 
you know, and when we work with employers every day, we run against, you know, the same old stigma. Well, you know, we have policies that say that we can't hire ex-offenders. We have policies that say that, you know, if you have a background, you can't even get through the filtering of an online application. Well, why not? Why not? And what we have done, what you all have done, is proven them wrong. So, you know, Alice Walker, who is one of my famous authors, and she wrote The Color Purple, she said the most common way that people give up their power in life is by thinking they don't have any power. Well, you have power. You have taken your power back. And for me, that's the definition of being empowered. And you are empowered. Hopefully, you've realized that you have this power and that you have uh, reclaimed it again. And that's what opportunity does for us. Mayor Coleman, all the directors, all of the community partners, everybody that's had anything to do with your success, including your family members, have given you this opportunity. And, you know, it, it helps us to move beyond our struggles and thinking that there's something wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with any of us. Through this rigorous program, you've learned things about yourself that you probably never realized. You've gained a new vision about who you are and why you matter in this community. You've gained life skills. You didn't really have to do much but show up. That's 90% is showing up. You really did work hard and you were reliable diligent, hardworking, and that's what employers are looking for. That's what any of us who are hiring people are looking for. You're motivated, you're fired up, and guess what? You do matter. We had so many people step up and show true commitment, the partnership and all the belief in you, the Columbus Urban League, Columbus Impact, Alvis House, and Denise Robinson wanted to be here today, but uh, she had another commitment. Um, she and her team stepped up as well. Columbus Public Health, uh, the Columbus Neighborhood Health Centers who provided the physicals and ongoing health care, Columbus State Community College, the Eldon and Elsie Ward YMCA that gave out memberships so that all of you could be fit and your family members could take advantage of that, and all of the dedicated directors, supervisors, and staff at the city. Thank you for answering my calls. Thank you for answering Amy's calls. Amy is like a cheerleader. No, she's like a bulldog, okay? <laughs> she has just, you know, called on everybody. Please give individuals a chance. And I want to thank my own team because this was not something that we had on a strategic plan. This is something that really needed to happen, and we made the time to do it. So I want to thank Frankie Nyland. I want to thank Kareem, Greg, Carla, Watto, Kate, Larry, Brittany, uh, Carisha, Akil, who put together the uh, photo video, and uh, he was one of our interns. And anybody who had anything to do with the success that you all are experiencing. With that, there's not a lot more that I want to say other than it's my pleasure, my pleasure and honor to introduce our mayor, the man who envisioned Restoration Academy and gave you all this opportunity and all the support that you have, Mayor Michael B. Coleman. Thank you, thank you. Well, sit down, sit down, sit down. You know, uh, today is uh, the beginning, the reignition of life for several of these folks that will be graduating today. But I want to go back to the very beginning. Uh, 
And that beginning was really a long time ago. And oftentimes I walk down the streets and go in our neighborhoods all over the city of Columbus. And I can't tell you how often uh, someone came up to me and said, uh, Mayor, did it, did, it, did it turn to brother? I need a job. And I said, well, all right, tell me a little bit about yourself. I said, well, I can, I, I, I can do anything. I said, well, well, what can you do? Anything. I said, well, tell me about your education. Tell me about your background. And about 50% of the time, uh, that individual said, well, I've spent time in prison. Now what can you do for me? And frankly, I wasn't sure. And it troubled me. It troubled me. It, it, it was it rested hard on my heart that what, what can I do? What can the city do? And so I thought about it and, and I had a conversation with the young man. He said, you know what, I made a choice. He said, I made a choice one day to break the law and I spent time in prison. And then after I got out, I made another choice. And that choice was to be successful in life. And I would do anything I needed to do, anything necessary to achieve success. And so that's what this is all about, choices. You all have paid your debt to society. Uh, now you have two choices to make. One choice is to do all that is necessary to be successful in life if given the opportunity, and this is your opportunity. And the other choice is just to survive, and oftentimes people end up where they come from, too often. In fact, in Franklin County, there's 2,000 ex-offenders a year released from prison. And I ask myself, do we do enough to make sure that they can choose, help choose the right, make the right choice in life. And so this Restoration Academy is about restoring lives and restoring the community in the process. And that's why we wanted to call it Restoration Academy. Restore our spirit, restore our lives, and restore the community all at the same time. And I stood at Cowick back in April, and there were 15 of you at that time, and 12 of you here today. And I said at that time that we were gonna ask you to do things that sometimes you didn't wanna do, and that this is gonna be difficult. It's gonna be challenging. You're gonna to have to do some stuff. You gotta earn your way back. And I said if that's something you could not do, didn't have it in your heart, in your spirit to achieve, then make room for somebody else who could. And I'm proud to say that these 12 individuals have made that grade. I'm proud of you. I'm very, very proud of you. And so, Amy DeLong, she's uh, in cabinet meeting, she gave a report on, on all of you, every cabinet meeting. I would ask her, what's going on with Restoration Academy? What's going on with these folks who said they're making the right choice? Are they sticking with it? And she would go through each and every one of you and say, well, this person has this issue, but we're working it out. And, and this person is doing really, really well, and this person is just fabulous, and they're just, and they're just working so hard. And in fact, there's some city employees saying they're working too hard. <laughs> and I said, hire that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Am I right? And the entire cabinet heard your progress along the way. Uh, my departments, uh, from finance to development to utilities, rec and parks, public health, public service, civil service, all have cheerleaded you on, wanted you to succeed, but gave you no slack either in the process. You're pioneers. You're the first. You're the first to graduate from this Restoration Academy. And being pioneers, you're really blazing a path. And the city, frankly, has ventured into uncharted water, waters, where we're trying to figure this out along with you. And we're not trying to just make it happen because we like you. We want you to learn something in the process. Job readiness, what it takes to succeed, uh, what you have to do to succeed, and to help you along the way in figuring that out. And you've done that, and now you're ready. You're ready for jobs, you're ready for life, this is your chance. This is it. And so nine of you, nine of the 12, are going to be working with the city of Columbus. Three of the 12 are in process of permanent employment elsewhere, either in the private sector or somewhere else and I've been told that that's going to happen as well. So all 12 of you, it appears, are gonna be employed. <laughs> A lot of folks were engaged in this process from the Columbus Urban League, uh, who's here today, Stephanie Hightower, Bo Chilton with Impact, uh, Community Action, and the Neighborhood Health Centers, and Eldon Ward and uh, Columbus Public Health, Columbus State Community College, Alvis House, Colwick, everybody's standing by you. And frankly, you've gone through the requirements, you're ready for jobs, and now this is just the first step in an ongoing process. One of you wants to be a bus driver one day. That's her goal. And my expectation that because she went through this and because she's now getting a job today, she's not a bus driver coming in, but that's her goal. And to maintain that goal, that's your goal. Keep the goal because you're going to reach your goal. And this is the first step towards your goals. You're going to make it. This is the first step towards making it. And keep your goals high and keep pushing. Because there'll be times when you get up in the morning and say, man, I can't do this no more. I'm tired. They're expecting so much out of me. How am I gonna get through today? You gotta maintain a goal. You gotta have a goal and a vision and we're helping you reach that goal. We're behind you 100%, 100%. And so all these people here, all of us, there's a lot of people here, are cheerleading for you, we're standing up for you, but most of all, we're proud of you. Because none of this could happen if it weren't for you. To say, I'm gonna get this done. I'm gonna make the right choice. I'm gonna do the right thing for me and my family. And you have. So congratulations. <laughs> now I'd like to bring up here Stephanie Hightower, who was also one of the key folks in making the Restoration Academy happen and your success in life. Stephanie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations. 
you know, I think it's important for us to recognize, and we always ask sometimes, what does success look like? So I want you guys to like look over your right shoulder, look over your left shoulder, because that is what success looks like. You are success. <laughs> for those of you who may not know, the uh, mission of the Urban League is rooted in helping uh, all people, whether you are an ex-offender, unemployed, underemployed, you know, it's our job to help you to access economic and social opportunities that help to lead to self-sufficiency. And so we are engaged and we love being engaged in this process in particular because it was about helping participants rebuild confidence and achieve self-sufficiency because changing lives um, is what we believe in at the Columbus Urban League. So we were so grateful to have this opportunity to conduct uh, a few workshops um, that you all were involved in, workshops in interviewing advantage, job survival skills, conflict resolution, and workplace place ethics. Because those are important as you begin to reintegrate yourself uh, back into the business community. We're committed about being, in, being with partners and in partnerships and solutions. And so, you know, I'm here today not only to congratulate you because this is not only a win-win situation for you, but it's a win-win situation for our community. And so not only am I here to say thank you for your, um, um, your perseverance, thank you for you going the 100% going um, the entire way through this progress uh, process. I also want to say thank you to Mayor Coleman for his vision. I want to say thank you to Suzanne Tolman, Coleman Tolbert for her vision, for including us. I want to say thank you to my partners that we continue to work with in this community um, to help um, folks like you. And again, thank you for letting us be a part of this historic um, initiative and partnership that is going to help this community move forward. And so now I have the pleasure of introducing one of my partners in crime, um, Mr. Bo Chilton, who is the president of Columbus Impact. Good afternoon. I'm Bo Chilton, CEO of Impact Community Action, one of the leading anti-poverty agencies in Franklin County. Our mission is to reduce poverty by providing hope-inspiring help and real opportunities for self-sufficiency. I want to first uh, thank Mayor Coleman uh, for your leadership in establishing the Restoration Academy. You know, oftentimes we have reentry programs and, and we try and encourage others to give a second chance or an opportunity to others. Um, but I always have to ask the question, especially for those who have reentry programs, do you have formerly incarcerated individuals on your staff? Um, and to my dismay, some do not. And I'm like, how are you going to be in the business of creating opportunity for others and encouraging others to hire if you yourself will not do so. And so I know that one of the challenges the city had was how do we establish a pipeline so that we can not only talk about it, but be about it. And the mayor faced some barriers with the process of how do you go about doing that. But like you, when you're faced with a barrier, you have to find a way through it or around it. And he found a way around it. And so you put your money where your mouth is, and I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor. I also thank all of the partners who, who have been part of this Restoration Academy. Um, together, I think we're going to create something very powerful, and I, and I congratulate the graduates here today. Um, I think it's important that you know why we wanted to be engaged here. When you have the opportunity to be part of something innovative and transformational, I think that you have to seize that opportunity. Also, when the mayor asks, you say yes. I want to congratulate all of our graduates here today. Know that I and that we are all very proud of you. Uh, we're proud of your hard work, your perseverance, and your accomplishment. You have completed the first step in your journey to transforming your life, strengthening your family, and re rebuilding our community. I want to also thank family members who have supported them during this journey. Restoration Academy really is all about opportunity and second chances. We are here to empower and restore the lives of people who at some point during their life's journey went down the wrong road, but now seek a new path so that they may be able to provide for themselves and their families. While many of us do not know what it is like to walk in their shoes, 
I do think that most of us intuitively understand how challenging it may be for a formerly incarcerated individual and for their families. We know that the challenges are many and that they are complex, but when you have focused, dedicated people like our graduates here today, and you couple that with a coordinated system of support, then you establish the wraparound services necessary so that they can succeed. They do not have to be condemned to a lifetime of unemployment and poverty. Oftentimes there is a stigma attached to the label of ex-felon or ex-convict, but we know and the people that we work with know that those labels do not define the essence of who they are or what they can become. In fact, when we empower one of our restored citizens, we begin the ripple of hope. And that empowerment is paid forward to others in the community who are inspired by your example. Many of the people that we serve are people whose spirit has been crippled at some point. People who at first glance seem to have lost all hope. But when they come to impact and when they engage with the Restoration Academy partners, and when we give them the proper respect, respect meaning re to look, to do something again, spec to look. When we look again, when we go beyond the surface and take a closer look, we find a quiet strength, a sense of resiliency and a glimmer of hope that wants to believe the rhetoric of building community also includes them. By providing hope-inspiring help, we have all witnessed the transformation in the people that we serve. And we have seen how their transformation has inspired their family, their friends, and our community. Their restoration and their renewed sense of hope have inspired us in the work that we do. This is the ripple effect. Real hope is not about naive projections of a better future, but is grounded in struggle and triumph in doing the real work. With Restoration Academy, we do not simply throw stones to create a ripple in the water while safely watching from the shore. Instead, we have chosen to dive into the water and to create waves, waves of change that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. So to the graduates here today, I leave you with this. It was the greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan, who said, 26 times I've been counted on to take the game-winning shot. In my career, I've missed 9,000 shots and lost almost 300 games. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. So to the graduates, keep moving forward. Don't look back and do what you got to do. Thank you. And now I'd like to bring forward, uh, you know, in order to do these things, uh, you got to have council support. You have to have a cheerleader, someone to help lead, helping to pay for this. And someone I have believed and, and does believe in this program and believes in you is Priscilla Tyson, Council Member Priscilla Tyson. Good afternoon, and it really is a fabulous day today. Margaret Mead once said, never doubt what a small group of committed people can do. And so, if you look at this group of individuals that are sitting right here, and with the individuals that they worked with, their commitment ensured that the 12 individuals that are graduating today have an, another opportunity to move forward in their lives. I want to thank Mayor Coleman because he certainly has been the biggest cheerleader for this program. And as he just mentioned, that each and every one of us has come in contact with individuals who will contact us to ask about a job. And as they tell their story, we begin to understand there's reasons why they've not been able to be employed. And so his vision, and with the group of committed citizens and individuals and groups here, decided to make a difference. And I am so happy that the mayor took up this challenge to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to move forward in their lives. The individuals who are graduating here today, yes, they've had some issue in their past. They have moved past that. They've paid their debt to society, and they want to continue to move forward with their lives. 
And not all of us get an opportunity to get a second chance or a third chance. And this program, Restoration Academy, has allowed individuals to have another chance. And you've already demonstrated, and that's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to be down. And people don't think, that you think don't care about you, aren't trying to help you. That's difficult to do. But with the individuals here, they have instilled hope in you. And you showed everyone what you're made of and what you can do. And many of us have not been in that situation, but we've been in other situations we know it's hard to pull ourselves up. But you have certainly demonstrated how important it is to move forward in a program. You are the legacy group. A lot was weighing on your shoulders. Because if you weren't successful, that meant the people that are sitting here weren't being successful. People would have, the doubters would have said, told you that wouldn't work. This couldn't work. But it has. And so you have to know that you are the legacy. You are the foundation that every other person that will have, we hope to have many more programs like this and many more in this community. But because of you, people will stand on your shoulders and say that because you did it, they'll be able to do it too. And the public sector and the private sector will be able to hire more individuals who, have, who want to move forward in their lives. So when you think about your life, don't think anymore about what you've done in the past. You think about you are a legacy. You are a legacy. So when you leave this earth, someone will be able to say you made a difference for every single person that will be coming after you. Of those 2,000 individuals that get out every year, many of them will have jobs because of you. So I thank you. I thank your family for standing by you through all the different times in your life. And I'm so glad that they are here and hopefully they'll be able to see the tape to see you graduating today. And I thank every single person from Suzanne Tolbert to Amy DeLone to the mayor to Shannon to Stephanie Hightower to Bo Chilton to Sherrod Brown's office. I thank Councilmember Craig who is here. I thank each and every director. Again, all the nonprofits, all the citizens in Columbus who helped to pay for this program to giving you a second chance. So I wish you the very best in your endeavors. God bless you. And I look forward to all the other graduates that will come after you. Thank you so very, very much. Now, it, it gives me an honor to introduce Director DeLong. It's funny, the mayor brought this up, that at every cabinet mem uh, meeting, that Director DeLong, all the, all the directors give an update on, in their departments, and it was director's responsibility to talk about the graduate, or, or the participants. Well, there's 12 of you guys. So it would, we would be going around the table and it would slow down when we got to Director DeLong because she knew everything. She really was keeping up with you and really updating us and really, you know, encouraging um, us to really uh, uh, push this program forward. She really cared a lot about you and it's really been really my honor to work with uh, Director DeLong. We've had many late conversations, an hour long, about how to make you guys more successful. Um, Director DeLong. Thanks. Yes, Wow, a lot of eloquent speakers today, and then you get me. <laughs> um, basically, I think I'm here because of the mayor's birthday vision. I walked in, we were supposed to be having brownies and I think some 7-Up. was it a big, big celebration, but we were all honoring him on that day, and, and he gave us that vision. And then that vision got bigger because it became one of the four initiatives in his state of the city. He was serious about it, and it takes someone at the top being serious about it for something to come to fruition. And he wanted to make it happen. He put it on every single mission that he had throughout by putting it in his state of the city. I mean, that says I'm committed to it. And when he's committed to it, I'm committed to it. So, and I think all of you who were involved knew, I said, your success is my success, so I'm in it with you, right? You guys have heard that from me, and I meant it. Um, that being said, the first and foremost 
thing that I need to do is recognize all of those people in the city, all of the departments, all of the staff, so I'm going to give some names out here. I hope I don't miss you, but without all of your support and commitment, this could not be possible. So we want to go start out by saying um, to all of the directors, let's name you out one by one. Um, Director Davies over at Utilities, Director Mark Kelsey at Service, Director Paul Rakowski here in Finance and Facilities, Dr. Long from the Health Department, um, Director Safford from Development, Director McKnight from Recreation and Parks. I have to say thank you to all your staff, your supervisors and your managers um, who provided the daily guidance and support to all of the participants because without all of you, this program could not be successful. The city worked together great, so I have to provide my staff, which is Tammy Rollins, Don White, Marari McKinney, Annette Bingham, and all of the HR administrators, and Jaquilla Bass for banding together and working to put together these jobs, the position descriptions, and everything that you have to do behind the scenes to even get someone hired in the city. I mean, it's not like today we say we're going to have a trainee and they're hired tomorrow. It is a lot of behind the work scenes that nobody sees, and I want to say thank you because we made it happen really, really quickly, and it was because of the commitment all the way up from the top to the directors and down to the, the line managers who said we're going to be um, committed to this program and that's why we're successful where we're at today. So thank you very, very much. <clears throat> I'd be, be very remiss without recognizing the one private employer who is standing up. I'm going to make him stand up. John Rush from Clean Turn. He is stepping up to the plate. I am pretty sure we're going to have our last few participants um, employed by him. And I'm very excited that he is committed to this social enterprise that he is because without people like him, this program has a hard time succeeding outside of a commitment within a city. And it has to grow. We have to have those private employers step up to make this program successful into the future. So thank you. And thank you for your commitment and your vision because it's very, very, very important. I too have a quote. Mine's really short. It was Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. So I challenge all of the graduates of the Restoration Academy to make your own path. Do not be satisfied. You all have potential. Every single one of you have potential. So believe in yourself, that's the key. Believe in yourself and blaze your own trail. I have that commitment and passion for all of you and I know that you guys, you're, you're in jobs now, but you have potential. So keep using the civil service methods, take those tests in advance because you have that potential, each and every one of you. My role today was really to introduce two of our graduate speakers, so I'm gonna take the time to do that now. Tarika Cradle and Russ um, Les Rutland. Um, Tarika is a person who loves a challenge. Prior to attending the Restoration Academy, she obtained her bachelor's and master's degree from college, but the Restoration Academy challenged her in a different way. It challenged her physically. Tarika was assigned to work in the Recreation and Parks Department this summer, which was especially challenging in the 90 degree heat wave we experienced, but she never gave up because she wanted a chance to prove herself, and she did. Trika was a leader among her participants and will be a success in her next endeavor. The next person who will speak after her is Les um, Rutland. He is a person of few words, but when he does speak, he is passionate and has conviction. This is how he approached his position with the facilities department and why he was so successful there. Les is a hard worker who is dedicated and committed and has the potential to grow and advance into greater opportunities. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for coming. 
I would first like to start out by saying thank you to Mira Coleman for starting the Restoration Academy. Truly appreciate it. Restoration Academy has provided all of us a second chance to redeem ourselves from decisions we made years ago. Personally, the Academy has given me hope when I walk into an employer's office or when I sit down and complete that application. Restoration Academy, Academy has helped each one of us build character. This is not just a program to me, it is a family working together to get results. With this being said, I want to thank our family for all of their hard work and dedication. I would like to especially thank Amy DeLong and her team for working long hours and extra hard to find us permanent positions. I would like to thank Corrine, Todd, and Greg Wimbush for staying dedicated to us, even when we had our moments of weakness and we were working your last nerves. <laughs> I do want to thank Dr. Dodley and Marcia White from Columbus Impact. I want to thank you both for taking us in your arms and allowing us to cry on your shoulders and helping us to understand who we are. Mayor Coleman, I salute you and I truly appreciate what you have created. <laughs> to all of those that are still here in the program, we did it. And I commend and I love all of you. Thank you to everyone else for the success and dedication to the program and working with all of us to make us successful. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Vince Lombardi once said that the price of success is hard work, dedication to the job at hand, and determination that whether we win or lose, we have applied the best of ourselves to the task of hand. Giving honor to the academy, to the participants of this program, and to the mayor of this great city, Mayor Michael B. Coleman. This quote encompassed the very essence of this academy staff and Mayor Coleman. To take time to develop and implement a program that addresses the needs of the former offender is a hard program to sell. And I stand here today to thank you, Mayor Coleman, for having the guts and the vision to see where an individual deserves a second chance. I stand here today to thank the Academy for developing a program that's hands-on, functional, and addresses the social, physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of life. I want to thank the Academy for understanding the needs of a former offender and the work that it takes to prepare us for gainful employment. We know how hard it is to secure gainful employment. I know firsthand what it means to go through the interviewing process only to have your dreams slip away, your dream job slip away through your fingers because once again, my past has came to haunt me. How many times have we heard, we like you, but? The Academy lets us know that we will continually face this challenge. How we view them defines us. Do we choose to see the challenges as stepping stones or obstacles? During this process, I have chosen to view my past as a stepping stone. I used to waste time, I used to waste so much time wondering what employers were thinking. Time was being wasted on past events I couldn't change. Time was wasted focusing on a negative mindset. Some of us came to this program with skills. Others needed to develop new skills. And yet others needed direction and that extra boost of confidence just to get to the next day. The Academy provided us with a different view. The, the Academy gave us skills and practice at networking, The Academy provided us with 
wrapped around services that met our individual needs. We benefited from group sessions that allowed us to see that we're not in this alone. Amongst ourselves, we created a network amongst ourselves, talking to one another, calling each other on the phone, seeing how we are doing, having each other's back. The Academy provided us with the tools to succeed. To my peers, the price of success is hard work, dedication to the job at hand, and the determination that whether you win or lose, you have applied the best of yourself to the task at hand. Hard work, dedication, and determination are the keys to how we define our success. As we continue our journey, it is our job to make the Academy proud. It is our job to make sure that we are the success I know we can be. It is our job to show Mayor Michael B. Coleman that his investment, his vision, his gut feeling is right on. It is our job to show those who doubt it that this is a vital program in the city of Columbus. I say thank you from the bottom of our heart. And on behalf of my peers, we say thank you, Mayor Coleman. We say thank you to you, your staff, and all the organizations and volunteers for coming together for the success of this program. Thank you. I was thinking of something really nice to say about Tariq and Les, you know, but I said, well, let me just hurry up and do what I was supposed to do because if I keep on, they're going to take my job. So, <laughs> so with that, I want to introduce uh, Ann Roberts for Senator Brown's office. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ed Roberts, and I'm here on behalf of United States Senator Sherrod Brown. First, I want to apologize for the fact that Senator Brown could not be with us today. And leafing through the literature on the Restoration Academy, and certainly after hearing everyone speak today, it's apparent that we are here as a result of collaboration. From the city, to COWIG, to the Urban League, you all had a vested interest in this product coming into fruition. Well, now it is incumbent upon the federal government to remain a partner by continuing their support for the Workforce and Investment Act. WIA is essential to our communities, and I am proud to say that Senator Brown has been and will continue to be an adamant supporter. <laughs> to all of the graduates, I want to thank you for sticking with the program. And again, I am sorry that the Senator could not be here, so on his behalf, I want to present each of you with a commendation from Senator Sherrod Brown. Thank you all so much, and congratulations. <laughs> Good afternoon. This is a joyous occasion. Let's clap it up. First of all, my name is Kareem Todd, and I am the uh, project coordinator for Restoration Academy through COWIC. And first, I just want to give an honor uh, to my president and CEO, uh, Suzanne Coleman Tobert, for allowing me to take this project. I also want to thank the mayor uh, for giving me the opportunity as well, so thank you. I have the opportunity of introducing the graduates uh, and handing them certificates, so I feel special today. <laughs> uh, but first I want to say, um, uh, let's hit on networking, and this is a great situation for them because all the people you see in the room, your supervisors, your participants that you work with, these are people that you need to continue to work with. These are lifelong networking relationships. And I'm a person who fondly believe in establishing relationships and keeping those relationships. 
So first, I want to say congratulations and thank you for uh, allowing me to work with you because after five to 600 calls <laughs> throughout the program, it's really taught me a lot um, and I thank you for that. So um, first of all, we have a token of our appreciation. Uh, we know it's a small token, uh, but we understand that the work and dedication you put in does not measure up uh, to what we're going to give you today. So uh, just think about that. Uh, the first person uh, I want to introduce, a very outgoing person. Uh, she will call me on Fridays like clockwork. And uh, just check in with me. Uh, and it, it was really good, very outspoken person. Uh, she would tell me how it is. And uh, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to get a kick in the pants, and she was willing to do that. So without further ado, I want to introduce you our first graduate, Shinora Al Husseini. Right, moving right along, uh, this gentleman, uh, very consistent in, in what he does every time I spoke to his supervisor, uh, on the work, on time, very diligent. He did his job, he did what was needed of him because he knew what that next step was going to be. Uh, so for the second graduate, I want to introduce you to Mr. Brant Bailey. Next gentleman, a uh, very quiet individual, futuristic person. He know what next steps he needs to take. Uh, need to get him a little bit of out, out of his shell. And as he matures, and I'm pretty sure his um, uh, comrades in Restoration Academy is going to stick with him uh, because he has it. Uh, next gentleman I want to introduce is Miko Benitez. Next person I want to introduce, very passionate and hard worker. Uh, when we first started, uh, we started with the idea that, you know, we need to build those skills. He understood that. Uh, but I tell you, he's very passionate about what he does. Uh, he has, I think he's the one that most benefited from this program. And I'm here to stand today. I love you and I appreciate all the work uh, that you've done and what you've got out of this program. So uh, next gentleman I want to introduce is Ronald Boone. <laughs> next person, I have a long story, but I'll cut it to 30 seconds, I promise you. Uh, when I think about empathy and, me and understanding, uh, I really didn't know that definition uh, until I met this gentleman. Uh, there, <laughs> you know, th this is a pilot program, and we understand that things happen, um, and we learn from them. And he was so understanding throughout. Uh, I felt like he was my mentor uh, through the program on patience and being diligent, diligent about the task at hand. So I want to welcome up Papa Cisse. The next person I want to introduce, um, very articulate, intelligent person, intelligent woman. <laughs> and um, she would email me. She won't call me. She'll send me a long email in essay form. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I took the time to read those emails because um, it taught me a lesson um, in really going through this program. And she knows where she wants to go. And so, I want to introduce Ms. Tarika Cradle.
At this time, I would like to um, have um, talk about one gentleman. Um, he's been a hard worker, conscientious. He brings a lot of work experience and life skills to uh, the program. He's in uh, public facilities, uh, sewer and drains, John Dalton. The next person, um, he's also at Public Utilities. Um, he's not here today. His name is William Davis. Um, he couldn't be with us today. The next person. The next person is Roberto DeFields. He's at Public Service. Uh, he's been a real dedicated, committed worker. Roberto. The next gentleman uh, is Les Rutland. Les um, is a, uh, he's working as a custodian at uh, City Hall and the substations. Les is a very dependable person, hard worker. As you heard by his speech, he's real passionate. Les Rutland. Next person is Cliff Stallworth. Cliff is a very personal person, hard worker, gets the job done, um, always on time. The last person is Hiram Woods. Hiram is a very positive person, hard worker, committed to his job, always on time, Hiram Woods. Just want to say one thing to everybody here. I see a lot of familiar faces. We appreciate um, what Mayor Coleman has done. Susan Coleman Tobert, Stephanie, Bo, City Council, Tyson, Herschel Craig, Boyce, other people that I know out here. I just want to say that given opportunity the people who sit in this front row, it not only means a lot to them, but it means a lot to us. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause for the graduates. All right, from the um, uh, City Council and all the partners, we want to say thank you for attending. Uh, and we're actually closing it out. Downstairs in the front, we have cake and punch for everybody to socialize. Thank you. <laughs>